John Baldoni. Welcome to another episode of Grace Under Pressure in uh, Piano Stories. I try to do these on Saturdays. Uh, today, where I am, it's Saturday afternoon, but for some of you, it's probably still Saturday morning, and others, it might be Saturday evening or even tomorrow. Anyway, today I'm going to play a collection of songs that I always like. I'll start off with one called Unforgettable, and it's unforgettable because the net. King Cole made it his own. So let's give it a whirl here, will you? accomplished pianist and the story goes that well one evening um, the singer wasn't available so Nat dropped in and uh, uh, played piano and sang at the same time I think the story is a bit apocryphal because people obviously knew that, that Nat King Cole had a voice but soon in time it became that he was a um, probably a better vocalist uh, or certainly had his, that unique warmth tone to him. And so he migrated uh, strictly to the, uh, the vocal and, and the world is better for that. So well, let's move along. Uh, here's one uh, by the, uh, Ray Noble, The Very Thought of You. It's one of my very, very favorites. I don't know very much or anything about <laughs> Ray Noble, but uh, what a great song he did. Uh, 
Here's one by uh, Louis Prima made famous called A Sunday Kind of Love. And for some reason, whenever I hear this, I always think of New York City. I don't know why. Perhaps it was, uh, <laughs> that's where it was composed. But I think of New York. <laughs> one from uh, the great Jerome Kern uh, that he teamed with Dorothy Fields, and it's called Pick Yourself Up, and it's from the musical Swing Time. So what are we going to do? It's a lively tune. <laughs> Stop feeling sorry for ourselves and move on forward. Uh, here's another one from the great Hoagie Carmichael. There's so many songs that he did that uh, he wrote that I like. I'll tell you a little story about him later. It's called The Nearness of You. And many of you may know this because uh, Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald did a memorable version, probably the, the version that everyone else will try to uh, emulate, or not emulate, but stand in awe of. And uh, I'll take a sip here. Here we go. Thank you. 
like another great composer of this era, um, Cole Porter. And um, uh, actually, um, and like Cole Porter, he actually went to law school. I think Cole Porter dropped out after a term, but Lou, uh, excuse me, um, Hokey Carmichael stayed in and got his law degree and playing music on the side, migrated to Hollywood. I don't know exactly know the circumstance and uh, started writing songs and uh, also found himself um, actually playing piano uh, in many uh, films of the 30s and 40s. You can always see him. He was always a, he was a very tall, lanky fellow, and he would kind of look like a country bumpkin, or he could play in westerns or whatever, but uh, he would be playing the piano in a saloon or maybe a bar or whatever. I don't know that he had any speaking roles, but he was a great composer. Um, and uh, wrote so many memorable songs. He teamed with many, many lyricists, uh, and uh, this one was by uh, lyric, by Ned Washington, great uh, lyricist himself. So anyway, uh, that's the story of Hoagie Carmichael, or a oh, story of Hoagie Carmichael. Uh, here is a famous song. Um, actually, I'm told it is the most played song of this era of the jazz song. It's called Misty. I'll try not to mess it up. By the great Earl Gardner. Here we go. <laughs> story about Jimmy and uh, after I played it's called this was like someone in love lyrics by the great Johnny Burke okay <laughs> Thank you. 
Jimmy Van Heusen, everybody, like someone in love. Uh, Jimmy Van Heusen was actually not his real name. He was born Clifford Babcock in upstate New York and came down to New York City and uh, was going to make his name in show business and decided that Clifford Babcock didn't exactly roll off the tongue. Story has it he was working in a, um, a men's clothing store and liked the name Van Heusen, so he became Jimmy Van Heusen. Um, he migrated to Hollywood um, and uh, had a part-time job, uh, no part-time job in the Second World War. Uh, part of that time, he was a paramount um, composer writing for the movies, uh, but his other job from 4 a.m. to noon every day was he was a test pilot for Lockheed. So he had two part-time jobs. I think that was probably about 16 hours a day uh, of actual labor, not counting everything else. So anyway, Jimmy Van Heusen, a uh, great composer and uh, great American patriot as well. So, uh, and there we go. Uh, let's find one. Uh, oh, here's one Frank Sinatra made, uh, famous by a composer, David Mann, whom I don't know much about or anything about, but it's called In the Wee Small Hours of the Morning. Uh, um, so you can play it as a, a, as a ballad or you can play it upbeat and I kind of do it in between. Here we go. <laughs> one I always think of my daughter-in-law, Georgia on your mind. Uh, her name is Tara and she lives uh, with my uh, son in um, Decatur, Georgia, just outside Atlanta. So, and she grew up on a farm in Georgia. So I always think about her. And again, this is another song by Indiana born Hoagie Carmichael, but it's called Georgia on my mind. <laughs> Thank you. 
Georgia on my mind, uh, which of course um, Ray Charles made uh, most famous. Okay, so here's another song by Jerome Kern, uh, lyrics by um, Johnny Mercer, uh, one of the great lyricists, a South Carolinian. Uh, had a wonderful, uh, wrote music himself, but had a wonderful way with words and uh, often wrote a lot of up-tempo, wrote for songs that were up-tempo because he wrote very catchy lyrics. Anyway, this one's Dearly Beloved. Uh, it's on the freeze, kind of freestyle, so you can, in other words, play it as you choose to play it. And I'll play it kind of in between. There we go. <laughs> which I have no idea what it was, but written by Sammy Kahn um, and uh, Paul Weston and Alex Stornbell. Anyway, it's got an interesting tempo to or interesting melody. <laughs> out today with a wonderful song by the composer Charles Trenet. 
uh, who was a com French composer. Um, mostly, this song was written in 1945-46, right after liberation, uh, end of the Second World War. And I always love the upbeat melody of this, and you may recognize it because Bobby Darren made it. It's called Beyond the Sea. I think the French title is merely La Mer. But anyway, it's Beyond the Sea, and I, I always think of the French uh, beaches. Actually, this time of year, it's August on this date, so uh, I'm sure the beaches are full. But anyway, um, here it is, Beyond the Sea. That's it for now. Um, another uh, uh, piano stories. I hope you will turn in, tune in during the midweek when we do um, Grace Under Pressure, and I interview um, leading lights, thought leaders, and doers who are shaping our world. Thanks for watching today. Until next time.